four more contracts where you're giving away these things at a, at a record rate. Uh, I mean, does there ever get to a point where Mick and Sean are like, slow down, man, we got, no. we got too many people? No, this is what this show's about. We're looking for young, up-and-coming talent. That's what it's all about. You know, when you come in and you fight your ass off, you get your opportunity and see what they do with it. Kind of a cool redemption story for Pickett, right? I mean, the right. two losses before. What's your mindset on somebody like that? When they come in twice, they've come up short twice. I mean, are you, are you, you know, is the deck stacked against them, or what's what's your take on evaluating for a third time? No, not at all. I, I think that uh, you know, when, when when you have a guy like that, the fact that he came back for a third time, a lot of people might say, you know, fuck this, I'm done, and maybe I should do something else or whatever. But a guy who's come back three times and fights like he fought tonight um, against a kid who's a knockout artist. Um, yeah, you, you get your shot, man. You know, some some people have it easy. They get in here quick, and and, and and some people have to work for it, man. And I respect I respect the grind. I respect the guys that, that keep coming back and work hard. I want to ask you about Rafael Al. It was obviously impressive, but the tumbling routine to start, was, was the fact that he got it right the second time, was that helpful for him getting the contract? I honestly don't know why guys do that shit. You, you risk blowing an ankle, a knee, anything. But that guy is a physical freak. I mean, did you see his physique during the fight, man? I mean, that guy is, his back is insane. You can just tell that he's a physical freak. Yeah. The one you passed on tonight, Anthony Romero, I mean, he was very, very impressive. Was that a yeah. tough call to, to Yeah. Not? Listen, the kid, the kid uh, I'll tell you, the, the, the tough thing is he's 8-0. He's from Canada. Um, you know, he was in a tough fight against a really tough guy. But when I looked at certain things, um, couldn't finish with that leg kick, was going for takedowns, um, really had a hard time it's when the kid switched up southpaw. I actually told uh, Breeden after the fight, you should fight southpaw. You look good southpaw. Um, and he's 23 years old. The kid's 8 no. He's 23 years old. He's got nothing but time. That, that kid's going to get better, and he's going to be great someday. He's not even he's not even anywhere near in his prime yet. He's, he's still a young kid. You touched on it a little bit with Silva, and I'll ask you about Breeden as well. I mean, when guys have performances like that... The they, other thing this does, this gives some of these other promotions an opportunity to pick this kid up. Pick him up, make him your star, maybe he becomes a world champion in one of these other organizations, and, and, and you know, can, can, can uh, get some experience and, and stuff like that. If, if, if you're another promoter and you're not watching this show and picking up what I don't, you're an idiot. <laughs> You're an idiot, and that's a kid that 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 somebody could definitely pick up and and make their their star and their and their promotion. Sure, uh, it was touched on Silva and Reed. I mean, those guys were tough as nails. Do they? I mean, in losses, do guys like that sometimes get on your radar as somebody that you might want to call up later on? Tonight, I got up twice and walked over to the to the curtain where the where the guys who lost the fight are. And uh, yeah, Silva, so much respect to that kid too, and Breeden. I, I I told them both. Um, and, 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 you know, the matchmakers see that stuff, and when guys fall out and we have late-minute replacements and stuff, those are the first guys that pick up the phone and call, without a doubt. You've got a busy week. I want to ask you about speaking on Thursday. What what, uh, what are you planning on doing with your speech? Obviously, you've done it before. What's uh, Give us a preview of what we can hear from you. Uh, you'll have to tune in Thursday and find out. I'll let it speak for itself. Uh, yeah, I, I, I leave tomorrow night, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. You know you've been loyal to Trump for a long time. Obviously, it's a weird time in our country. Did you think at all about maybe seeing this one out with as divisive as things are in politics right now? No. No. That shit doesn't bother me. Listen, this is America. Everybody has their own opinions and their own choices. I know that, that sometimes people go after you because of whatever, but everybody knows me. Everybody knows what I'm about. And, and uh, you know, I don't know. Talk to me after the speech. Do you worry? I was going to say, do you worry that people automatically assume that by you speaking, you sign off on everything he does? I don't give a shit. No, I don't, I don't care what, what people think of me or what they think. All I, The people who know me know who I am and know what I'm about. Other than that, I, I could care less. There's tons of guys that, 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 that hate Trump, whether it's celebrities or whatever, and, uh, you know, I'm cool with all of them. We're, we're all cool. It doesn't, like I said, the people who know me know me, and the people who don't, all judge me anyway. It's, it doesn't matter to me. I could care less. Well, just a couple more uh, since you're going to be gone this weekend. Uh, Adesanya Costa, the, the rivalry is heating up there. It's, I mean, everybody's looking forward to it. Do we know a location yet? When do we get to announce it? The fight of the year, man. I can't wait for this fight. Um, I, I, I keep talking, but 
Still to this day, you guys might disagree, I don't know, but I still have Whaley Zhang versus Yoani Young Jacek. Still, uh, we, we were in a meeting the other day and we have those big TVs that play out there. It, it literally, that was on and it fucked up the whole meeting for me because I couldn't stop watching that fight. And it's so goddamn good, uh, that fight. But I'm telling you, what's going to give it a run for its money is going to be that fight. Obviously, the two fights that you got to think are going to give that a run is is Gaethje versus uh, Habib and, and uh, Israel and, and, and Costa. And no, I do not have a have a location yet. Fair enough. Last thing for me, I want to ask you about John Jones, his announcement to move to heavyweight. Have you started talking to him at all about like when he would like to have his first fight? No. I, uh, as far as uh, last time we talked to John Jones, John Jones said he's going to take some time and do his you know, things that he's into right now um, and, and and take some time. And when there's, a you know, a right fight, he'll give us a call. Could you see him waiting for the winner of Francis Nagano and Steve Miocic and fighting that winner? Or do you think he's got to get a win at heavyweight before he gets a title shot? I have no idea what he's going to do. I, I honestly don't know. But is, being, is his pedigree enough to walk into a title fight, in your opinion? Of course. I mean, realistically, John Jones is undefeated. He's never been beat, you know. Mazzagotti's been out of the game for years. I want to keep beating this guy up, but, you know, you know. John Jones is undefeated. Was tonight the highest level we've seen on the Contender Series yet? Yeah, tonight, I think tonight, tonight, I think tonight was the best night. I think that, uh, what I loved about tonight, everybody came to fight, man. Everybody came to fight, and uh, you could just tell everybody wanted to win. Everybody had that killer instinct. Even the Alvis fight, he, you know, that kid was a tough kid. He fought, he was giving him problems. He risked it, jumped it onto that guillotine, and, and, and choked him out. You know, those things are dangerous, risky. He doesn't get that, and that kid pulls out of it. He's on the bottom, of, 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 you know, when he didn't have to do that. I love kids that go after it, man, and, and, and try to finish. And you're, you're here. This is your this is your chance to show us what you got. Don't squeak out a, a decision win, man. Go for something. Show us who you are. I know a quick finish never hurt anybody, but is it sometimes better to see these guys in back and forth wars with another great guy so you can just tell, like, wow, quality right here? Yeah, you'll get those, but I like guys to finish, too. You know, you come in, we, we put on these great fights. The matchmaking on this show is unfucking believable These guys are the, are the two best guys to be fighting each other, and when you go in and you finish a guy like this, it means something. I want to touch on something you said to John about other promoters need to be watching this show without naming any names or anything like that. Do you get frustrated sometimes in the sense that not only am I doing the highest level of this show, uh, of the sport, I'm also building up the new stars for everyone else and no one else in the sport is stepping up and doing the same thing. Do you ever feel frustrated with that? I just think they don't know how to. I mean, out of the 20 year history of being in this sport, the answer is they don't know how to. That, that's the only thing I can come up with is that they're just not good enough to do it. So, you know, everybody waits till somebody gets let go here and they, and they pick them up. Um, but yeah, that would be a smart thing to do is, you know, grab that 8 no Canadian kid and, uh, and build him. That's the other thing they're not very good at either. Just uh, uh, following up on the Trump speech, I'm just curious, do you have to get that vetted by his people and you get to write it out beforehand or do you just get to wing it and speak from off the I head? Get up there and say whatever I want. <laughs> That's either a great thing or a bad thing. Uh, and last thing, I know we're sort of the pandemic stuff, we've all spoken about it to death now, but I'm curious, end of August, pandemic since March, has the Apex now paid for itself, essentially? The Apex is, is incredible. Um, what we've been able to do here through this thing is, has been unbelievable. Uh, I don't even know if you guys know this, but fuck it, I'll tell you anyway. We just bought 10 acres over here, too. We've got another 10 acres now. Um, more stuff coming soon. Is it, is it empty land or? Land. Land. We bought some land, yeah. Ten more acres of land and probably start building again next year. Thanks, Dan. Yep. Can you give us a hint on, on what you're building? Hotels? Hotel. We're going to build our own hotel. Wow. Yeah. Then we'll be completely self sufficient. That's, that's quite some news. So, when do you see this being? A Hopefully, next year. Depends on how this crazy shit, you know, what happens here in the next whatever. But um, obviously, with what's going on right now, our own hotel would pay for itself real quickly. 
would this be a place that would just be exclusively for UFC? Yeah, it's UFC. I mean, or could the Apex, we're talking about doing other events over here and stuff like that. We're, we're, uh, and, and we're going to start doing lots of programming for, um, for UFC Fight Pass over here, too. Is it a place where fans could come and stay at the UFC hotel? Uh, it, it would be more designed for fighters. Yeah, it's going to be just like the Apex was designed for fighting and putting on um, special events. This place would be designed exactly for what our needs are in a hotel. Uh, in regards to the RNC convention uh, on Thursday, there's a lot of prop bets out there. Yeah, on yeah. Your speech, yeah. And one of them is what color of shirt you're going to wear. Yeah. Everybody thinks the white is the most, red is the, the long shot. So. Yeah, I, I saw a lot of comments from people like, you know it's going to be black. <laughs> can, can you tell us so we can make a little bit of money? <laughs> I don't want to fuck up all the bets that people made already. Good luck, everybody. Has, has having uh, an association with Trump, has that helped get the UFC going again during this pandemic? And did that help us? I think Trump's been very pro-business, very, I mean, and not, not just us, but, you know, as part of that task force that he put together, and literally every sport, every major sport in the United States was a part of it, and, and uh, he, he did a great job with that. He was he was uh, instrumental in, in, in helping all of us come back, and very supportive. Did uh, did the White House or Trump have anything uh, to do with helping you get Fight Island going? Um, no, no. Fight Island was we 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 did that, you know, with, with the guys in Abu Dhabi. Look forward to the hotel. <laughs> Me too. Thanks. And this, this year was the first season that uh, Mexican fighters came to fight here in the Contender Series. And at some point you talked about having a Contender Series in Latin America. You still mm -hmm. have that, that plan? You got another mic? Hey, mic guy. You the mic guy? This thing isn't working too good. He's on the phone. <laughs> Will there be a casino in the hotel? No, no. You know I'm a sick, sick man, right? You know that. <laughs> That's all I need. Um, yes, the answer is yes, and we're working on a, on a PI too. We're working on a PI too down there. We, we, we had a we had a spot picked out um, for the PI in, in Mexico City, and then some stuff went went on with the landlord and. The whole deal fell apart, um, and then the world fell apart. So we'll get our shit together when the world gets its shit together. And, um, I noticed that Jay Rodriguez left here with with Alejandro on August tonight. Did you get to see him uh, these days, or he went to the PI or something? What was the question? That uh, Jay Rodriguez was here with, uh, with Alejandro. Yeah, yeah, no, I didn't see him when he was here. Just uh, finally for me, uh, Kelvin is saying that he wants to fight twice this year. He's, he's looking for a fight uh, late September. Has he asked you for those fights, or did you see him fighting twice? Kelvin Gasolum says he wants to fight twice this year. Okay. Um, he wants to fight twice this year. Um, that's, that's a tough one. I don't know. I love watching Kelvin Gaston fight. I mean, if he can fight twice this year, we would do it. You know, I, I, I don't mind turning guys around quickly, so if he can do it, We'll probably pull it off. But where he sits in that division, you have to have two guys for him to fight this year. You know, he's, he's not he's not like uh, not one of the top guys in the world. He's one of the top 15 guys in the world. So I don't know if we can make two fights for him by the end of this year. But give it a shot. And just finally, uh, Saturday, uh, you say probably that Dustin's going to fight uh, Tony. You see that fight happening the same night as uh, Habib and Justin and me, like an elimination for them? Um, probably. <laughs> Thanks so much. All right. Yeah. Uh, do we have an update about Anderson Silva? Is it going to be is it gonna be his last fight? Yes, it will be his last fight. So he, he agreed. He said yes, it's going to be my last fight. Yes, yeah, his last fight. Perfect. My last question is. Tyron Woodley against Coco Compton is going to be here in Vegas. Tyron Woodley versus Coco Compton. Yeah. Did we not announce that yet? No, we did. We did. Yeah, not the location. Okay. No, it's in Vegas. Yeah, it's in Vegas. Cool. Thank you, guys.